Now we're going to talk about using clozapine for treatment-resistant psychosis as well as mood disorders. And here I'd like to highlight several expert consensus guidelines and algorithms regarding the use of clozapine. So beginning with treatment-resistant psychosis, there are three such guidelines that I'd like to share with you. The first is the so-called TMAP, or Texas Medication Algorithm Project for Antipsychotics. Step one in that algorithm is a trial of a single second-generation antipsychotic for an adequate dose and duration. If the patient has only a partial or non-response, step two is a trial of a different single second-generation antipsychotic or alternatively, a first-generation antipsychotic. And again, if after an adequate trial in terms of dose and duration, there's a partial or non-response, stage three would be a trial of clozapine. I think this is very interesting because those of us who treat patients with schizophrenia and other psychotic disorders, when we take a psychiatric history and we ask about what Antipsychotic medications the patient has taken in the past, it's not uncommon to get a laundry list of five, six, or even more different antipsychotics that they've been tried on. And when we ask about, have you ever heard of clozapine or were you ever on clozapine, there's kind of a deer in headlights look that we receive. Yet, this particular algorithm suggests clozapine is third line after just two failed trials. And even more importantly, clozapine could be considered earlier in this algorithm in patients who have a history of recurrent suicidality, violence, or substance use comorbidity. So exactly what we were discussing previously about clozapine's indication. Nevertheless, if patients have persistent positive symptoms of psychosis, hallucinations, and delusions for more than two years warrants and more than five years really requires a clozapine trial. I try to instill in our psychiatry residents that it would be almost tantamount to malpractice to not at least offer a clozapine trial for a patient who has had such a degree of persistent positive symptoms. I also rely heavily on the Schizophrenia Port Expert Consensus Guidelines. Those are the Patient Outcomes Research Team expert consensus guidelines, which, very similar to the TMAP, argue that clozapine should be offered to people with schizophrenia who experience persistent and clinically significant positive symptoms after two adequate trials of other antipsychotic agents. And here, I think this gets to kind of an important definition we've been saying, an adequate trial, and that's often defined as at least six weeks at a dose of 1,000 milligrams per day, chlorpromazine equivalents. And then most recently, we have the new American Psychiatric Association Practice Guidelines for Schizophrenia, third edition, and those guidelines recommend clozapine for patients with treatment-resistant schizophrenia, but also patients with schizophrenia and substantial suicide risk despite other treatments. These guidelines also suggest clozapine for patients with schizophrenia and substantial aggression risk despite other treatments. So as you can see, all of these guidelines are really hammering this point home that for schizophrenia, the gold standard for resistant illness is clozapine and that clozapine should potentially play a role in the treatment of our patients with schizophrenia who have significant risks of suicide and aggression. In terms of mood disorders, clozapine is not just for patients with psychosis. There's evidence for mood disorders, and there are randomized controlled trials as well as open-label studies that have shown modest evidence for mood stabilization in bipolar disorder. And there are a number of case reports for improvements in psychotic major depressive disorder with clozapine. So in review, clozapine is recommended for patients with schizophrenia who have failed two adequate trials of other antipsychotics. 
The APA practice guidelines also recommend clozapine for patients with schizophrenia who are at significant risk of suicide and suggest it for patients who have substantial risk of aggression. There's also modest evidence for off-label clozapine use in both bipolar disorder and psychotic depression.